Well, good afternoon and welcome to our Ventures Onside webinar. Today, we're taking a close look at the GCC region's mega projects. Well, we appreciate you joining us and uh, I'm sure we're going to have a great hour uh, to discuss this topic. We have some fantastic uh, uh, panelists, experts in, in, the, in the field of design and uh, construction project activity. And so I'm sure we will have um, a great discussion, a great show. Thanks for joining us. Well, there's no region in the world that has more that's, ha that's had more ambitious plans for real estate development than what we have seen in the GCC. From living museums to the world's tallest buildings and futuristic cities, crazy theme parks and uh, multi-year visions, mega projects in the region have fueled the development of construction industry here for more than two decades. And this has stimulated significant investments in the region for building related services, the manufacture of building materials and construction activity. Well, it's been a horrid 18 months for all of us, but there is hope as we're now starting to see very positive signs for recovery throughout the entire region. Today, we will take a look at the mega project activity and try and paint a picture of what is to be expected in the future for our lives here in the Middle East. We, we wanna look at a few of the major projects to understand what's, move for, what's moving forward and um, what's moving slowly. Mega projects take time to design and plan. And so it's very important that we understand both the scope and the status of these projects. Well, my name is Phil Higgins and I will be your host for today. And um, I'd like to introduce you to our panel. And so joining us today, um, we have three exceptional engineers and architectural designers. Unfortunately, Clive de Villiers hasn't joined with us yet, but hopefully he's going to drop in at some stage. He truly is a seasoned professional. Keo International Consulting are very busy, and I know he's flying to Saudi Arabia tonight. Joining us from AESG, we have two exceptional people in their field, uh, Mr. Norman McCum and Naveen Issa. So guys, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. We look forward to your insight. Scott, your, your, the, the partner at AESG is a great friend of Ventures Onsite. We've had him on our show several times and uh, it's always a pleasure to have you join us. Um, so, so Norman, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? What, what's, uh, what makes Norman McCoom tick? That's a very dangerous question, Philip. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll keep it appropriate for this, uh, for this webinar. I guess uh, for me, um, I've been with AESG six months and the, uh, I guess what fueled my relocation to the region is basically what we're chatting about today is the mega projects. Um, I'm an associate director for Environment um, based in Riyadh. So obviously there's a, a predominant focus on what's happening in Saudi, but there is also a global blend, uh, which Naveen can chat about. Um, predominant feature of my career since 2012, 2013 has been mega projects, and that's the construction of mega projects, mostly within the energy sector. So that large scale uh, approach to uh, construction and mass onboarding of people and uh, risk associated with environment has uh, has been my focus for the, the last 10 or so years. I guess what makes me tick is uh, visionary and ambitious projects. Uh, you know, where is it we want to be in the 10 or 15 years? Um, and I think we look within the GCC region, predominantly Saudi and what's happening there. Um, and we can probably put a full stop at the end of that sentence and say, let's see um, where we're going for the, you know, uh, along this 2030 vision, and I think a lot of the world can can take lessons learned for uh, from this journey over the next uh, uh, 20 years. Fantastic, Naveen. Uh, I, I was looking at the AESG's website last night, and uh, 
I know the, the construction industry still is a man's world, but there, there's you're, almost almost 50% of the employees that work for ASG are, are women. How is this possible? And what are you doing to kick it over the 50% mark? <laughs> um, thanks, Philip. I think, um, yeah, for us, obviously, I think I, I don't like to, to, I guess, put so much attention and I guess so much focus on bringing women in. We are very open and very uh, transparent with regards to equal opportunity. If we see someone who's good, someone who has the, uh, uh, the right credentials, someone who's motivated, someone who aligns with our ethos and aligns with our vision to uh, you know, be the best specialist consultant up, uh, out there, then you know, they get the job. It so happens that you know, we have uh, a good portion of our board actually being female and almost 50% of our staff being female, even though you know we have quite a large commissioning team and a large, I guess, construction supervision team um, in environment and commissioning and some of our other specialist discipline areas. Um, but somehow we make the blend work in terms of you know both site work as well as office work and because of it i think the the uh, the disciplines where we work whether it's sustainability environment fire and life safety or facade design and engineering um it's it's all of those hot topics and i think we are fortunate that you know there's a lot of young <laughs> characters, a lot of um uh, good, uh, good candidates, I guess, from around the world working for us from, you know, in across our offices. Um, so yeah, it's not just the women, actually, we are of around 30 nationalities in the company, which is also uh, amazing and such a multicultural um, environment. Uh, well, we, uh, we often have women uh, join us. We, we like a bit of a balance, you know, um, it's not always easy to find you know, uh, you know, some women to join the panel, but I tell you what, every woman that we've had on our panel have totally ruled. I mean, they are <laughs> exceptional in this field of engineering and, and design and architecture. I mean, you, 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 you're really doing fantastic. So um, we look forward to hearing more from you and uh, um, we, we will be making a presentation, um, identifying several projects throughout the region and uh, if you have any comment associated to those projects, guys, please just jump in. You know, this is an open discussion format, but we want to bring to the many that have joined us just some, some consistent and regular information about the project activities that's going on. There's one other gentleman that I really want to introduce you to. His name's Mibu John. He quite often has hidden behind the curtain on uh, our webinars, but we dragged those curtains open, and uh, we and, and he is very. We're very proud to have him on our panel as well today. John is a partner and director of Ventures Middle East. John, why don't you just say hi? Hi, uh, thank, thanks, Phil. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is John Migu John. I'm a partner with Ventures Middle East and Ventures Onsite, and partner and director. And in fact, it's been uh, it's been quite some time since uh, I, I I come in with Phil on a on a panel. Maybe the last time I, I was in a panel was maybe two years two years back. And uh, uh, this is a topic like when when Phil said this time we are talking about mega projects. So I this is something which I was very passionately doing since last twenty years. You know, tracking uh, heading ventures on site, which. Uh, where we track each and every project in the in the Middle East and Africa. So this is this is something which we very passionately do. We have a lot of clients. I, I know a lot of our clients have joined in today. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's a pleasure to be part of this panel today. Well, we really appreciate you being a, a part of our webinar, and we appreciate your support at Ventures On Site. If you are not a subscriber to the Ventures On Site platform, and let me just tell you, you are missing out. Ventures On Site details all of the project activity for you from the concept of a project to its completion ventures on site has been doing this for more than you know nearly 20 if not more than 20 years and in our database we have existing information for all of the completed projects throughout the region and all the all the and the future projects that we can report on you have access to this information with access to the ventures on site platform and uh, it's a great resource if you're looking to 
connect with consultants or contractors or even developers to promote your service or your product, um, we'd be more than pleased to show you how this can be achieved. And uh, you're most welcome to reach out to us, um, send us a question, um, just, you know, just put, in, put it in the questions there. I'd like to talk to somebody about ventures. We'll make sure we get back to you on that. What we are going to do is take a look at each region, each country in the GCC marketplace, and we've identified some of the major projects that are happening, um, just, just so that you can get some framework as to the volume of business that is moving forward. It might be a little bit slow at this point in time, but in the next few months, we are very confident we will see significantly more activity. We're going to kick off with the development of the Mina Zayed port. This is a 15 billion US dollar development. And uh, this project involves construction of mixed use residential complex. And it's located on a 150 acre site in Abu Dhabi, uh, Mina Zayed. This development will comprise of hotels and residential districts commercial and retail areas. The clients involved with this project are Aldar Properties, Modon Properties and ADQ. That's the Abu Dhabi Development Holding Company. And so the finishing works are underway for the new fish market in this project. And the Fisherman's Wharf is in design. And in the next phase, our prime plots are, will on this development will be in transformation of the Mina Zayed into a, a beautiful seafront destination. Um, and so that's an interesting project to look out for. Moving on to the next, we have the Hale Al Gasha Sour Gas Development. I'm sorry if you are just from the buildings construction sector because there are quite a few oil and gas and industrial projects in this top list, top list of mega projects. And there's good reason for that. You should be welcoming this investment into the oil and gas sector. And we'll discuss that a little bit more. But this particular project is another 15 billion US dollar project. And it's one of the largest sour gas field projects, as well as the largest upstream project that ADNOC is developing. It's expected to produce about 1 billion cubic feet of sour gas per day. And the infrastructure requirements for the Hale Gasser project include a, a minimum of 11 offshore artificial islands that will be designed and constructed. Um, so this project is an ad hoc project and the schedule for construction is underway on the reclamation, ground leveling and the infrastructure, infrastructure packages. The project's divided into four packages. So we have the offshore drilling and compression facilities, package one. And then there's the offshore processing plant, package two followed by the utilities and processing and process buildings, which is pa package three, and the main if processing plan package four. ADNOC um, had issued a consultancy tender on the 25th of July this year for a fresh study and front end engineering design feedworks for this particular project. And so that's a major step in the ex ADNOC are really investing heavily in this, in this region. Another major project is the Bourge 4 complex in, Dubai, in, in UAE. This is a 4.5 billion US dollar project and the scope is expected to increase the current petrochemical production to almost 10 million tons per year. So John, you've been following a lot of these petrochemical projects. Um, you know, there are several packages here for this particular project. I mean, these, you don't, you don't go spending four and a half billion US dollars all at once. And so there is a progress in plan. Do you have, what, what else do you have to say about some of these um, industrial projects that you're seeing? Uh, not only industrial, like uh, if, if we talk about ADNOC, ADNOC has very ambitious plans to convert the Ruiz industrial complex as a whole into a downstream Silicon Valley of the world. And uh, in fact, Baruch project forms part of this master plan. We are talking about an overall investment overlay of 45 billion US dollars, of course, not for the Baruch, but for the overall uh, Ruiz development. I mean, you know, in recent, in recent times as well, we've been hearing significantly about uh, some of these new, you know, hydrogen, green hydrogen, mega investments going on in, and, and I know none of these are on our report, but there's, 
significant focus on this petrochemical and the chemical industries, yes? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep moving along. We're going to head from Abu Dhabi down to Massar in Sharjah. Um, this is a, another 2.2 2 billion US dollar project. Um, the scope is a 1,760 million square meter project. And this will have 4,000 villas and townhouses. And it will all be set in an eight gated district. The districts are linked by a beautiful green, a green landscape spine. And the projects will also feature fitness centers and skate parks and children adventure programs and um, you know, incredible, incredible investment there in Sharjah. I mean, we've all seen what's happened to Sharjah in the last you know, 10 or 15 years. It's really an outstanding city in the UAE. Massar's community center will contain a supermarket and shops and cafes, and it'll be an entire community development there. And uh, this is being um, driven by Arada development. And so Arada has announced in May 2021 that the infrastructure design and supervision consultancy contract at the Massar will be awarded to Parsons Overseas Limited and ASGC, that's an intro, where, where, do, where have I heard that name from before? But ASGC has been appointed to construct the building for the Massar Experience Center. So this is, a, this is the first major, major step forward in this particular project and ASGC have taken it on board. Parsons will oversee all aspects of infrastructure, delivery and the project, including roads, water power, drainage, um, ensuring full integration of the overall master plan. And ASGC will complete this experience center and the show villa by December this year. And I'm sure after that, the rest of the projects will continue to, to you know, the, the rest of the development will continue to progress John, have you heard any more on this on this particular project in Charger? Um, uh, not more than what you said, but I just want to add something on um, on the project as a whole. Like Massar is the biggest project announced by any developer in UAE after the start of the coronavirus pandemic. You know, so I would say Arada, the developer, is is a very develop uh, a very brave developer who announced a project of this scale um, at the beginning of this year. It, it was announced in January 2021. And, in, and also Arada has other uh, active large scale projects like Aljada, uh, Nasma Residences, etc. Very good. Well, back up to Abu Dhabi because there's a very interesting 1.736 billion US dollar project being um, executed by Jubal Island Investment Company. And the scope of this project is um, is the is is that the project needs to have six district zones of interconnected villages, village one Haven Town, village two Panorama Grove, village three Jubal Point, and village four will be the South Grove, village five will be Sanctuary Shores. This is another major project activity in Abu Dhabi that is moving forward, including it'll include uh, residential townhouses, low-rise apartments villas, um, another community, also including offices and business park, food and beverage and hotels. It's going to be just another major project. Now, we understand that this project is moving ahead. Arabian Construction Company, ACC, SAL, was awarded the main construction contract for the Jubal Island Phase 1, Plot 1A Section JS uh, project in April this year and mobilization for this project is underway. Design works are in progress for all zones. So this is a major investment um, in, in Abu Dhabi that is moving ahead. Looks quite nice to live there, wouldn't it? Be wonderful. Um, okay, so some of the other major projects worth mentioning um, here in the UAE without lots of details, but these projects are all in construction now. Not to forget that we have the Mohammed bin Rashid MBR city, which is ongoing. And we've got the, uh, the Dubai Creek Harbor project. Both, both projects are with um, EMAR. We've got the Valley project, which was uh, very recently re re released again with EMAR. They, they are pushing forward with releasing project activity. And we've got Til Al Al Gaf, um, a development by Majid Al Futaim group um, that is 
moving ahead. So these projects are still in, are all in construction and uh, making good headway. It's interesting though, you know, when you start seeing and talking about some of these major projects during the COVID-19 period, a lot of suppliers uh, to the construction industry didn't really complain too much about, you know, not having enough orders. They were continuing to supply. Um, projects were moving ahead during COVID-19, during 2021. Of course, there was a reduction in some of the new awards, but construction projects were moving ahead. And uh, some of these ongoing projects are, are, are there to support this. Well, let's have a look at uh, Qatar, some of the major projects in Qatar. Um, Phil, uh, Phil, just a minute before uh, we actually go into Qatar, let me uh, just add a few more names because in, in the in the list which we said were more uh, Dubai and Sharjah projects. I would like to just add a few projects from Abu Dhabi. They are, they are very active uh, as well as large scale projects uh, like the Yas Acres. Then you have the Al Riyadh city and also there is, uh, there is Qasr Al Jurf. Also, if you look at the Northern Emirates, uh, there are not much projects which are very active or very large scale, but uh, still, if you want to pick, I would, I would pick the Sheikh Zayed housing program in uh, Ajman, as well as the Hayat Island development in Ras al-Khaimah. Yes, uh, the, the, uh, well, I live in Ras al-Khaimah, and so I can, I can tell you firsthand that the construction work at, for, for um, Dubai properties is ongoing, and it didn't stop. It was 24-7 during 2020, and has been 24-7 you know, in 2021. Um, the project is moving ahead very quickly. And so, I mean, that's a, that's a major investment, a major development there as well. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. So let's head over to Qatar. Um, and uh, we have some, some beautiful projects that are still moving ahead in Qatar. We've seen some great projects built in the last five years there. Um, Quetifan Island, North LaSalle's project is a, is a 1.2 billion US dollar development by Quetifan Projects. And uh, the scope for phase two will include um, South Waterfront Apartments Precinct, East Villas Precinct, and the North Villas Precinct. Um, lots of precincts. Um, there's schools and medical centers in this development, which is fantastic. Um, bidding is underway for the main construction contract covering the infrastructure and landscaping works. I had the opportunity to host a webinar in Qatar, and uh, I had a director of Credit Fund join that webinar, and it was very exciting to hear some of the projects that they are moving ahead with. Um, we've, we have the Ariane City in uh, Mesamir. Um, this is a 1.3 billion US dollar project by Ariane Real Estate. The project is located in Mesamir. Correct me, John, if I say that incorrectly. Um, the project is a total um, 1 million uh, 200. 1,200,000 square meter project. Um, it will comprise of approximately 196 residential buildings, in addition to a one kilometer long strip of retail uh, boulevard and, and a commercial street mosques and will be well equipped with hospitals and clinics. Tremendous uh, development there. The scope, uh, the schedule for this project is that um, the project is ex execute will be executed in phases and Al Bandari engineering and contracting is carrying out the construction work for the first few buildings bidding and negotiations are underway for a few of the packages so if you're based in Qatar and looking for a couple of projects that's probably a really good one for you to target um, the Guan Island project is a 780 million US dollar uh, project. We slid this one in. I, I think a mega project is more than a billion dollars, but we have a we have a couple of interesting projects that are under the billion the billion mark. But the scope calls for the construction of a new island project, which is an extension of the Pearl Qatar development. And this island will accommodate three thousand five hundred residents and will be the home to seven hundred the home to seven hundred and twelve units including 639 apartments, 41 waterfront villas, and you know, a beautiful development. No doubt it will be very high end, uh, a very high end development. The uh, total plot area for this project is for uh, 400,000 square meters and the, with a build up area of 388,000 square meters. So this project will also be executed in, in packages 
Construction is in progress for buildings and landscaping works. Um, um, some, of, some bridges and district cooling plant is moving ahead in construction. Bidding is underway for the main construction contract covering the construction of the uh, Corinthia Hotel and Beach Club. So uh, another amazing project there in Qatar. For John Wadi uh, uh, Lusail, is a 2.5 billion US uh, dollar project with Bawa Real Estate Company, um, very prominent developer in Qatar. And this development consists of two large parcels of land with a total land area of over 3 million square meters and located in the northern part of Lusail. So this development will include 120 standalone villas with, with street views and 160 villas um, with wadi views, each, will, each with a land size of approximately 900 square meters, which is pretty large for construction in this area. So John, um, what, what's the schedule look like for this particular project? I know uh, it's, it's one of your favorites uh, there in, in Qatar. Yeah, this project actually the tender for the main construction uh, for the infrastructure works actually that is for the uh, which is the Furjan Wadi Lusail infrastructure phase one. It's already been issued in uh, during the first week of July and uh, bids are expected later this month. And uh, tender schedules for the remaining packages are uh, not yet announced, uh, but it, it, it should follow soon. Um, the development infrastructure of various industrial zones pretty interesting to think that there's 2.8 billion U worth of um, just infrastructure works that, that are moving ahead with Manatech. And so they are really focused on supporting that continual development of Qatar. I know there, are a lot of, there was a lot of concern as to what's gonna happen after uh, FIFA, so, um, but it does seem that there is significant project activity moving ahead in Qatar. Um, and so it's, uh, it's fantastic. So we've got also um, the Northfield expansion project, and I'm gonna let John comment on this a lot because this is, uh, well, it, it was originally announced that there was you know, construction award of 13 billion uh, this year, but it's part of a package of a total of 40 billion US dollars um, of investment from the, uh, from, um, investment from the uh, the cut from Qatar gas. And so John, well, um, you, you, I know you've been following up on this project as well. What's your read on some of this industrial activity that's going ahead now in Qatar? This is, uh, this is a major, major project in Qatar, which is going to drive a lot of activity in Qatar, especially in the oil and gas industry. So far in 2021, till date around uh, 20 billion worth of contracts has been awarded to EPC contractors on this project alone. So this project alone has uh, uh, taken the oil and gas contractor awards for Qatar as well as the entire GCC region up, up the roof if you compare it to the uh, contractor awards in the last couple of years actually. Yes, I mean that I mean it's not just stopping there. there's other there's another 3.5 billion uh, development here with North Oil Company. Um, tr tremendous investment in this oil and gas sector in Qatar, which I guess is uh, supportive to their, you know, their bounce out of the FIFA, building all the stadiums, you know, what, what is after football. And, and so Qatar, you know, there's a tremendous focus on continuing the growth and the development in the Qatari marketplace. So the, uh, so the Al Sheen oil field is, is uh, a project that is moving ahead. The schedule, the construction for this is in progress. Alchine oil field development phase three. There are other packages, five, six, seven, and eight have um, been awarded. And so this is a, a major investment moving ahead as well. So it's interesting that um, we, you know, we've seen some very positive um, growth for the region. I mean, last, last year was disastrous. I don't, I, I don't like looking at the GDP figures for 2020, but bouncing out of that, we are seeing growth throughout the, throughout the region. Um, John, any comment here? Positive growth uh, for all the GCC countries for this year, projected at least projected by IMF uh, as of now. And if you look at the GDP uh, growth for last year, 2020, all the GCC countries had negative growth. So if, you achieve, if we are able to achieve what you see here now as, 
and as projected by IMF, it is actually setting a stage for um, further growth going forward. Fantastic. We're going to keep moving because we, we, we want to keep our time to uh, one hour today because and we have so many more projects to to sort of touch base with everyone that's joining our webinar today you you will we will email to you this presentation so you'll have all of these details all of this information is available for you with the ventures on site intelligence tracker but uh, i'm sure you might think that i'm sure you'll think that you'll appreciate this as a a very good resource for you so over to oman there's some um incredible developments going ahead in oman big focus it's been a bit slow during COVID-19, but we are seeing some progress. There's the Madinat Al Ifan project, a 15 billion US dollar project in, 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 um, in Oman by the Omran office. So this project calls for the construction um, of, you know, um, Muscat's new downtown, Hay Al Ifran Airport Heights, all of that kind of residential development. So that's moving ahead. Um, We've also got the Mina Sultan Caboose Waterfront project, uh, a beautiful 1.3 billion US dollar project, again with the Omran office. So this is another major project uh, that's 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 moving ahead. Um, the Hay Al um, Shark District, the Shark District, a $1 billion project Muscat, with the Muscat National Development and Investment Company. Beautiful project that's going ahead there in Oman. Um, and uh, we also have the Dukam City, which or Dukam City, which is a billion dollar um, economic zone authority development. And we're hearing a lot about Dukam in the news. So the scope includes the development of five districts, inclusive of existing and upcoming residential, commercial, mixed use, uh, logistics, tourism development. It's an, an, an incredible um, an incredible uh, uh, project across 150 million square meters of, uh, of project activity. So phase one was awarded to Albina Construction in May 2018. So there is continuation of work going, going on there. Um, over to Kuwait, some of the mega projects that we're seeing in Kuwait, not a great deal of going on in Kuwait, but there's one very interesting um, sustainable project here. The, um, Shagaya Renewable Energy Complex. This is a mega uh, project uh, of 1.3 billion US dollars of investment from the Ministry of Electricity and Water and the Institute of Science Research, a government-driven um, uh, sustainable energy developing project that will include a whole range of alternative um, uh, energy collection sources so we have concentrated solar power, we have um, um, we, we, photovoltaic, then there's another big solar park in, in the fourth phase. And so this is very interesting, the construction of phase one, this will be a concentrated solar power project and also a wind project and PV plant, so a combination of both. But uh, a very interesting project activity developing there. Um, some other projects of interest very quickly in Kuwait, we have the Five Islands project in Kuwait, there with the Supreme Council of Planning and Development. We have the Madinat Al Haria City of Silk, Tamdeen Real Estate Company, another interesting project. I love that photo, that is really cool. Um, the Kuwait Metropolitan Rapid Transport System, the Al Zoo Petrochemical Complex by Alphans, Alphans 3, and the South Saad Abdullah New Town, and the Northern Gulf gateway project so all of these projects are very are moving ahead we understand in kuwait john do you have any update on these projects for kuwait we, we haven't heard a lot about kuwait projects in the news as much but i'm sure things are moving ahead uh, yes uh, i i don't agree that it's really moving ahead actually kuwait has uh, very large scale projects like you said uh, the railway the islands development Madina Harir, but all of them are in the very early stages. We do not expect much activity in uh, most of these projects in the next one to two years or even two to three years. Uh, but the long-term prospects for Kuwait are very attractive, provided these projects move from the drawing boards to the execution phases. Okay, very good. Simil I think it's a similar situation in Bahrain. 
Although in the news recently, we've heard of, you know, some, some you know, a steady uh, new project awards happening in Bahrain. Um, but the first project that we'd, we'd have a quick look at and one that's been in the news a little bit recently is the Bahrain Metro project. Um, this is a mega investment of 8.09 billion US dollars with the Ministry of Transport and Telecommunications, the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning. So really the whole ministry is involved. So this project entails rapid transport network all throughout uh, Bahrain. The project is expected to be tendered through a global competitive bidding process. And so it is a bit of a dream. Uh, we haven't actually seen anything progress from, from this stage at this point in time, but all phases of the project will be tendered on a PPP model. And um, it, it is interesting that we're seeing significantly more PPP uh, uh, project activity. So that's happening in Bahrain. Also, we have the Al Nassim Waterfront Development, a, a 600 um, million US dollar. It's not, not quite the 1 billion, but it is Bahrain. It, we, we thought we'd throw in a couple of smaller ones, but that is a major project development with Daya Al Mohak. Um, very interesting project uh, that's moving ahead. The main construction contract for the zone one construction of the villas overlooking the main canal has been awarded to, to uh, Cyprus Cybraro, tablet a JV. Um, construction has not yet started as it's expected to start once the canal works on the project have been completed. John, do you have any, any more comments on the, uh, on the Bahrain activity? Yeah, in addition, I would say there are uh, some social housing projects like the 25,000 locos housing project. And there's another one called the development of East Citra, both in the active construction stage, but there are still more phases to be awarded to contractors. Another long-term project is actually worth mentioning is the Bahrain International Airport, which is in the study stage. Uh, construction activity in general, especially on these mega projects is actually uh, a bit slow. Uh, and like I said, in Oman, um, uh, most of these projects, like uh, for, for um, uh, most of these projects are looking for private sector as well as international investments. Okay, very good. Well, before we jump into Saudi Arabia mega project, whenever, if you're in this, if you're in this region and you talk about mega projects, you immediately think of Saudi Arabia because we have heard significant release of or press release of projects in Saudi Arabia of, of magnitude. And uh, I'm sure there's, uh, that, that's dr there's driving a lot of hope from these projects that we're hearing about. But it would be interesting just to have a look, a very quick look at the project awards um, from 2020 and the forecast of project awards for 2021. Now, let me explain to you how we arrive at the project forecast for 21. Ventures Onsite tracks all of the construction projects in the region. And in our investigation of these projects firsthand with the developers or consultants or the contractors, we report on which projects are moving ahead. And so we know when a project is expected to be awarded. We use some algorithms to calculate the value of the projects in, in, during the course of, the, of, of, of its construction process, but the value of the project we record when it is awarded and on the projects that we are tracking, which is the majority of the GCC region, we, we recognize this number. And this is the, the number that we're re re recording here as a forecast against what we actually saw in 2021. The interesting two points I wanted to highlight is that the expected award for 2021 will be similar to what it was in 2020, except in the area of oil and gas. And this is driven by this tremendous um, investment for this particular sector. And there is good reason for that, but, the, few, but the, the, the promise is that this investment will continue to stimulate the, con, the, the building's construction activity moving forward. And so you can see uh, when, when John mentioned earlier, significant investment, that is the variance from 2020 to 2021. John, you have any comment on that? Yeah, what you see on the screen is actually the contract awards by industry. And if you chart the contract awards by country, we will see Qatar and the KSA as the main contributors for the, um, uh, for the 2021 contract awards, followed by UAE and Kuwait. Uh, if you add up the contract awards 
by industry or country the, that it will add up to 116 billion for 2021 comparing to 78 billion for 2020 so uh, we are expecting um, uh, from from 78 it is expected to go up to 116 this year and so far till date almost 77 billion worth of projects has already been awarded uh, so 67 percent of what is projected is already been awarded so we expect uh, the, uh, the number what we project of 116 should be should be hit by end of the year. Do you uh, in in our data in the database? Do you make adjustments during the course of the year, or uh, is the forecast relatively accurate? What's your background there? No, the forecast is relatively accurate. Maybe uh, ten. We we expect maybe a ten to fifteen percent maximum. Uh, up and down it may go, but we we do adjustments on a regular basis. If the pro the projects are updated on a daily basis, so if there is a project which uh, which is let's say put on hold, so we we adjust the uh, the expected award date. Let's say a project is cancelled, so we remove that number from our expectation. So we do all these adjustments on a, on a daily basis as well as and when we update a project. So if I go into the ventures on site database, I can go to your reports section and I can generate this same report. And yes, so I have this understanding on a day by day basis, according yes. to our and you can you can export the list of projects which makes these numbers as well. Fantastic. Wow. Okay, very good. All right, we, we, we want to move on to Saudi Arabia, because like I said before, when you talk about mega projects, you do think of Saudi Arabia and the first one that comes to your mind is Neom at 500 billion US dollar project, the public investment fund announced Neom. Um, as, as a project that will build the future. And um, I, I know we, we, are, we are really rushing out of time and I do wanna bring in Norman and Naveen to some of this discussion as we talk about Saudi Arabia, okay? Um, because it's very interesting. I come across a lot of people that say, you know, I wanna be involved with the NEOM project. Well, I mean, th is there really a NEOM project? Because there are so many involved projects within this master plan and what we're seeing now in Saudi Arabia and what we're hearing a lot about is the master plan and uh, Norman you, I know that you've been involved with some major projects uh, these in, in the in the past I mean if I if I said to you I'm going to build me on how, how many years is there in the process of designing a mega project like me on what a question, though. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, I, I guess um, this hasn't been done anywhere before, you know. Um, and for us as, as consultants um, in being engaged across the PIF agencies, you know, each one of them is unique in itself. You know, um, if you just look at the project size and the footprint and the boundary of NEOM, it's, you know, the, it's almost the size of Belgium, I think. You know, so that in itself, in terms of land area, is huge. Um, the geographic and climate regions within that project footprint itself is is unique. You know, if you look at the Tabuk region up in the north, you know, if uh, those uh, uh, winter and snow seekers want to find snow in Saudi, that's where you go in 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 winter time. But um, the whole Red Sea in itself, all the PIF agencies that are, are, are developing along that coast, each one of them brings with its uh, its own unique challenges. And ASG, we're involved in um, pretty much a lot of the project gateways and stages, you know, from design competitions to uh, assessment and approvals, and then into project execution and delivery. Uh, so us as, an, as environmental and sustainability professionals, we, we get involved very early. So for us, uh, we we try to steer and direct, whether it's a competition or master plan where we can add value, we try to um, uh, chip in with our two cent. I guess in terms of uh, becoming involved on these projects, it, it's it's like anything, it's relationship building and, that, and you know, where we are in the region and what we're doing in Saudi is testament to uh, the AASG team and Naveen and the rest of the team that are, have been in the region longer than I have to, uh, I guess, deliver on exciting projects. We already have that history and, you know, we can show that. So, but um, early engagement uh, with, with your clients, uh, trying to provide that value add, I guess that's what ASG are strong at. We, we, um, we promote that early engagement, you know, before 
the RFP stage of try and add value to show that we can help and steer where the project needs to and wants to go based on previous experience. Um, and I guess, you know, it, Naveen can, can chip in with what we've been doing in Saudi long term and maybe provide some history to, uh, around where we've seen the PIF, PIF agencies evolve. Perfect. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Naveen in a second because you just sort of touched on an interesting point that I wanted to explain is that NEOM is the, is, is the developer. It's the master plan of an entire city. And inside that city, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of projects. And, and if, and, and if I, I'm not going to be, if I'm a supplier to the construction industry or if I'm a contractor, I'm not going to tender on building NEOM I'm going to be tendering on a project in the on. And so it's important that we track the project activity. And I'm sure it's the same as an engineering service provider like your company. Uh, John, these are we have on the screen here a list of some of the projects that uh, have been uh, announced, so specific projects within the NEON master plan. Um, do, you, do you have some comments on these? Uh, no, the, uh, the status, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, there are there will be, as, as you said, there will be hundreds of projects which which will be, uh, not hundreds, maybe thousands of projects within the NEO master plan development. And uh, what is announced so far is, is just the tip of the iceberg only. And uh, what we see at the moment is we have the construction village, uh, we have the industrial city, solar dome desalination, Sindala Island, all these already under construction, whereas we have a uh, uh, few projects announced like the, the line, uh, the hydrogen vehicles assembly plan, the vault, uh, volumetric model assembly plan, all in the on the planning stage. So there, there are already projects in the design stage, under construction stage, under tender stage, and uh, this will um, uh, be a very active construction project for the next 30 to 40 years, looks like. In a, in a similar way, we have the Red Sea, uh, the Red Sea project, another master plan. But inside the Red Sea project, there are multiple, multiple projects um, uh, covering this entire project of, you know, 50 islands, 34,000 square meters of, of project development. So a lot of the first phases will include hotels and luxury residential units. And we are seeing a lot more activity in Red Sea. Um, I love their airport design. I just, I love, I love looking at that, those, uh, the images of the new airport uh, design and uh, there's some beautiful, beautiful development moving ahead with Red Sea Development Company. I had an apology from Red Sea. They wanted to be on our panel and uh, they, they did apologize. We will do what we can to connect with them. There's a lot going on in Saudi Arabia right now. There's a lot of conferences and uh, the construction industry is moving ahead. But uh, here you have a list of the projects and you can see that many of these are in construction. So there's activity progressing. So that's uh, always, that's very healthy. We've also got the King Salman Park in Riyadh, an 8 billion US dollar project. And some of these projects we don't hear a lot about, but there is tremendous construction work moving ahead in Saudi Arabia. The King Salman Park in Riyadh, we've got the Renewable Energy Project. This is very interesting. I was studying this the other day because it came up on, the, on our um, top 10 trends for the, for the construction industry. John, tremendous investment here in solar technology, uh, 7.5 billion US dollars of activity there. What do you see? It's a very active project at the moment and round two, uh, as you can see, it's almost uh, all the packages are already under construction. Uh, there has been seven, or, uh, I think seven contracts were let out in the last three, four months worth some 3000 gigawatts, uh, sorry, 3000 megawatts. And um, uh, still there is one or two packages, which is still in the tender for construction stage. Whereas round three, uh, almost all the packages uh, are in the tender for construction stage with uh, two or three packages still out to be out for tender. But it's a very, very active project at the moment. Very good. Another major project that we, we, we've heard a lot about in the last few months is the Amala. Amala, the Riviera, the Riviera of the Middle East. Beautiful project. And I love this area. I love this territory. It's a $6 billion uh, development. The project will cover an area of 3,000 
800 square meters of uh, beautiful construction and, um, and, and design to accommodate such a, a beautiful uh, area that we have in, in the Amala district. So a wonderful project. I mean, it's really exciting to see that Saudi Arabia is moving ahead with these construction projects with sustainability as part of their vision. Um, um, Naveen, what, what are you seeing in Saudi Arabia in this, in this particular area? What, what's impressing you most about this vision for Saudi Arabia's major project development? I think a key uh, common factor is sustainability and environmental protection, like you mentioned. I think, you know, they, if it wasn't for the vision and if it wasn't for the overarching, I guess, you know, sustainability targets or uh, and environmental protection, and I guess not just, I guess, maintaining what's already there, but actually improving and contributing to improving environmental value, uh, which is obviously a challenge given the extent of construction and extent of uh, uh, development that will happen over a short period of time. Uh, nevertheless, the, the leadership, the teams that they have, the consultants that they bring on board all work towards achieving their sustainability agenda and environmental protection agenda. I think that's the common thread and that's why I guess we have been so successful in um, working with uh, these PIF companies over the years. Um, it's, it's adding that um, value when it comes to planning and because you are talking about you know massive massive uh, lands uh, to be developed um, you have the opportunity to um, incorporate very early on uh, very important environmental considerations um, uh, for uh, habitats for topography for soil for species for uh, uh, different environmental components that you know, typically are only addressed when a problem happens or when when an accident happens. Um, so um, it's been it's been very refreshing to see um, um, the vision driven uh, by by, uh, by these. And I think a key common factor, obviously, as a result of uh, the need to diversify the economy um, and and fortify and and, and improve uh, the tourism sector in KSA. I mean, all of these projects are working towards that same goal as well, which is what attract uh, uh, international tourism, but also local tourism and and changing the local scene um, to um, capitalize on what they have in terms of existing natural assets and natural resources other than oil um, and other than, um, I guess, um, you know, uh, non-renewable uh, sources. So I think, uh, yeah, it's a tremendous opportunity. And I think we've been, like a lot of our competition, a lot of you know, engineering consultants and architectural consultants have been busy with the most. It's working on these on these projects and help achieve the Saudi 2030 vision. Yes, absolutely. I mean, when when the rest of the world thinks about Saudi Arabia, they think of sand, but there are some absolutely beautiful places I mean, in Saudi Asia, Arabia. Exactly, unbelievable, yeah. an yeah. unbelievable country, and uh, their vision for for the, the encouragement of tourism is outstanding and I'm sure that will be very successful. I mean, these projects that we're talking about are 10, 15 year programs. And, uh, and so the, we, we've seen a lot of social change in Saudi Arabia in the last you know, few years. And in 15 years, it'll be a completely different place and uh, just, just absolutely amazing. Well, um, I don't want to. I, I, I love talking about some of the residential developments in Saudi Arabia, but all of this is possible because of oil. Would we have the development in this region if no one, if we didn't discover oil? I don't think so. And uh, oil and gas is a driver of the Saudi's economy, and and it's it's promising to see that Saudi Aramco continue to invest in their uh, in in this in their industrial activities oil and gas as well um, because we know that this will continue to stimulate the economies that will encourage further construction of these cities and 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 so forth and so the um Jafara gas plant is a six billion us dollar investment by saudi aramco and uh, and that is um 
a very promising move forward, um, very exciting. Um, and so that, I mean, that's, there's so many projects that we could talk about oil and gas, but it would be a pretty boring, uh, where, no, for me, it would be boring, but um, maybe if you're in the oil and gas sector, you'd enjoy it. But, um, but there's so much construction uh, or planning for, uh, going ahead in this oil and gas sector. Um, one of the mega projects that uh, is of interest is the Gidea uh, city in Riyadh, a 5 billion US dollar project um, with the Gidea Investment Company. The project will implement will be implemented in three phases. The first phase will include the construction of the entertainment city. The second phase, 4,000 residential units. And the third phase, um, the growth of the city, which will include the construction of 11,000 residential units. Um, do you guys have any involvement in this particular project? Yeah, we, we've been working on it for the past few months. Um, We've, uh, yeah, we've been working uh, on some of the specialist disciplines, like we're doing the acoustic design on, uh, on uh, some of the theme parks uh, that they have going on at the moment, um, as well as sustainability, waste management, environmental uh, compliance. So we're doing a multidisciplinary offering on this. And um, it, obviously it's, it's a completely different story. I mean, this, this project is accessible uh, through Riyadh. It's connected to the metro. Um, the entertainment industry in general in Saudi is seeing a lot of activity. The future is definitely looking promising for you know theme parks, for music festivals, and you can see them happening already. And the project uh, uh, really, um, I guess, yeah, focuses on that. Uh, what we're working on is uh, a couple of, uh, or actually the largest uh, theme parks that are going to take, uh, that are going to be built in uh, in Kadia. And uh, yeah, I have to say, we, we can't really talk a lot about it, but you can see some crazy, crazy things from, from this render. Uh, I mean, there's a, the, the projects that are in design for Kadia right now are, are, are tremendous. They're all, they're all moving ahead. We only have, we only see some infrastructure projects that are that have executed construction, but there are uh, tremendous um, opportunities there in some very interesting projects and designs. It's not just yeah. theme parks. I mean, it, people talk a lot about the theme parks, but there's a, there's a whole lot of uh, you know development, the 4,000 residential units, and you don't build 4,000 residential units unless you have a hospital and a school and you know, we, I, I don't know what a driver's club is, but, but anyway, all of these major projects are, are there. Do you know what a driver's club is? Anyone? I don't know. But there's there's a okay. lot of activity. It's a Formula One track. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so one. it's probably. Oh, why don't they just say Formula One? I mean, uh, no, I have no idea. Okay, so there's a there's tremendous opportunity there in in that particular project. Um, let's keep moving along because we're we're already over time and we're having such a great time. The Rural Al Medina project, a five billion uh, US dollar project. Not, not a lot of people hear about this project. And uh, it's an interesting project that covers an area of 1.35 million square meters with a total build up area of 3.5 uh, million square meters. And the project will comprise of 500 housing units and 80,000 hotel rooms. And so that's a major project that is now at tender. And so some, you know, uh, so phase one is a design and phase two is out for tender. I, I, I'm surprised that phase one is still in design and phase two is already out for tender. But uh, another mega project, um, five, mil, five billion US dollars with the public investment fund, an incredible project that looks absolutely amazing. Um, John, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, and so I, I know that we've sort of kept the classification of a mega project of, of around a billion dollars, which is pretty major development. Um, but um, are you seeing any other you know, projects of interest in Saudi Arabia? Yes, uh, especially for Saudi, the, the list doesn't end here, actually. There are a lot of, a lot of other projects as well. Uh, in the likes of the land bridge project, there is another uh, Red Sea village development in Jeddah coming up by a, by a client called Alinma Al Turaya. Uh, then there is a new Jeddah downtown project, the Avenues project, uh, Shams Riyadh project. So there is quite a lot of uh, other projects as well, which can be classed 
uh, as mega projects and all active projects as well. I mean, it's been an interesting hour. We've been talking about mega projects. Uh, uh, honestly, before we sort of sat down to look closely at the activities throughout the region, um, you, we can get a little bit depressed with the last couple of years, you know, focused on, you know, finding new jobs or finding new opportunity. But uh, um, we may not be seeing, you know, some, some of our clients at Ventures On Site have reported they're not seeing the volume of orders that they normally would. But then those that we connect with that are designers and consultants and at the front end of that project activity, they're very busy. And now that we sort of break this down and have a close look at some of these mega projects that are moving ahead, I now understand more as to why Scott Coombs and his team are very, very busy. I mean, I've known Scott for, for more than a year and we've tried to connect, uh, you know, so many times. Um, we've only spoken online and for the first time in a year, I had a chance to meet with him yesterday. I mean, you guys are really busy. But now I understand why you're so busy because there's so many projects that are being designed in, in, in this region. And that's fantastic. Um, I mean, the hope therefore is that once those projects go to tender, we will start to see a, an explosion of opportunity. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sort of predicting that there'll be a bit of a, a catch up period of these last couple of years once things move ahead. Um, Norman, what are you seeing here? Are, 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 you, are you guys really that busy? Or Scott, or or is Scott just making up stories? So he does, doesn't want to meet with me. No, that's a, it's probably an under an understatement to be honest, Philip. Um, and the thing is, it's it's driven by um, ASG's uh, growth ambitions as well. You know, we're you know, um, I think Naveen, if you can correct me, um, over the COVID pandemic, we've grown almost eighty percent. You know, and that's fueled by the activity. As an organization, we've grown, and I'm one of those new starters. Um, so we've definitely uh, um, looked at it and uh, been, um, how would I say, uh, ambitious in that. But the, what's happening in the GCC is definitely uh, fuel that fuel that growth, whilst we are looking at other markets globally. But um, uh, Saudi in itself, I, I think a lot of the big players uh, globally, you know, if you look at consulting and advisory firms, there's a lot of focus on, on the Saudi market. But um, don't get me wrong, that's not just by, um, you know, uh, it's something happens overnight. It's relationships that have been built over uh, decades, you know, and uh, established working relationships. But then obviously with the influx of um, expats to the region, uh, uh, well, probably from within the region, it's probably uh, a recirculation of people that have been in the UAE for a while, they've maybe gone to Saudi now. So uh, those people that have worked with uh, or worked on mega projects, say in UAE 20 years ago, there's probably a similar feel to what's happening in Saudi. So it might be a little bit of a, a deja vu approach, but. I'm sure there's some people who sat client side in UAE back in the day are probably sitting client side Saudi now. So um, there probably is lessons learned with uh, some of the mega projects that have happened previously in the region that can be applied um, applied to Saudi uh, to Saudi Arabia. I guess the, the the important message from 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 Saudi and the vision uh, the vision is it's and Naveen touched on it. It's less of a dependency on oil and gas. You know that's where they really see it. Um, Saudi and the whole GCC region is hyper dependent on the black gold, as we call it. So, you know, it's really opportunities here for developing uh, luxury resorts, uh, high end uh, living standards and for people to live, to work and spend their money in Saudi as well. Uh, so, um, you know, kudos to the, the vision. And I think, you know, you, you might see, you know, whether it's five years or 10 years, you know, people globally wanting to emulate what's happening in Saudi within other emerging markets uh, outside the GCC. So I'm sure there's a lot of regions uh, looking at Saudi and uh, wanting to, to learn uh, from them. Yeah, fantastic. I know um, uh, you guys are busy, but uh, so is the majority of, or, or if not all consultants that I have relationship with, they're all busy, everyone's busy. And uh, I mean, it's very healthy to see that that is moving ahead. I mean, we can only hope that these projects will move ahead with execution, um, but the signs are looking good. And there is significant volume or number of projects um, that will be driven by 
you know, these mega projects in Saudi Arabia. But if we didn't have Saudi Arabia, the point of today's discussion was to identify that there are still also major projects moving ahead in the other GCC region that, that often get um, overshadowed and uh, by, by some of the activities that we do hear of in Saudi. Um, and so that's, that's a, that was just an imp important point that we wanted to touch base with today. Um, there are a lot of questions here with regard to, uh, can we share more information about ad hoc projects? Yes, you can. You can have access to that information with the Ventures Onsite uh, uh, platform. And um, if you have the platform then and, and, are not, and are not identifying this information, our team will help you get better connected. If you don't have the Ventures Onsite platform, we'll send you an email and show you how the Ventures Onsite can help support your business to be more successful and to be more connected with these projects. It's very important to be connected. It's very important to know people like Norman and Naveen. It's very important to have a relationship with the developer or the consultants who, who are representing a developer. It's very important to have close relationships with the contractors so that you can be successful in your business. And that's important. And so we hope this uh, presentation has helped you get a little bit more understanding about the project activities that are moving ahead in this particular in this region, entire region. Phil, Phil uh, before we close, and uh, of course we won't be able to take up uh, uh, any questions, but there is one question I think our 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 guests can uh, uh, give give some uh, light on is actually uh, whether the sustainability and environment guidelines. Uh, it is it the same for all the PIF projects, or it varies within each project. So this this uh, question, I think, specifically for uh, Naveen or Norman, actually. Yeah, um, happy to take that one. Um, they're all guided by the national uh, uh, legisl uh, legislation and laws. Uh, but they do also follow international uh, standards and, and criteria. They're actually not the same. Um, uh, they have their own uh, KPIs when it comes to sustainability and environmental protection, and they have their own procedures as well. So um, they're quite different for each one. Um, but yeah, all in line with, I guess, international criteria as well as uh, local standards. Very good. I have a I have a question that I was going to save until the end, uh, Naveen, but I'm going to ask this question for you right now, to you right now. If you in, in 15 or 20 years time, if you had to live in Saudi Arabia, no choice, you had to live in Saudi Arabia, which city or which development would you choose to live in? No, you're putting me on the spot. I work with all of them. I can't really choose. <laughs> But um, I think I think for me, uh, everything that's happening in the Red Sea. Um, so basically, that includes everybody. Yeah, <laughs> um, um, I guess that's on the West Coast. Um, everything that's happening uh, around the Red Sea is uh, is absolutely stunning. And uh, some of the schemes that we've seen, some of the ideas that we uh, uh, that we come across, and uh, I guess work through because it's very challenging. The ideas that they have and um, I guess the creativity but also you know the challenge of protecting the environment um, and, and staying I guess in line with uh, the sustainability uh, sustainability vision is so challenging and I was talking about it yesterday actually if you can um, if you can make it work on those projects in that setting, in that very sensitive environment, you can make it anywhere. So um, we we do see amazing progress, amazing work is being done, and um, and yeah, anywhere along that line, I guess, uh, for me. That's wonderful that you that, that they're actually building cities on a clean piece of paper. Nothing's yeah. existing there except sand or coastline and uh, the whole development is being built and designed. And this takes time. And so for the last, you know, I mean, especially over, you know, the last 18 months, I've heard a lot of people, you know, asking what's happening, what's happening with NEON, what's happening with Red Sea. These projects were announced a few years ago, but it takes several years to design and develop to move forward with the execution of these projects. And uh, I know that, and, and, and you, you as well know, these projects are being, are, you know, they're being designed 
there is activity. It's just that we're not seeing all of the construction activity that we hope we would see, but it, but it's it's happening there. I'm, I'm sure Norman, from what you're, you know, six months with your company, but I'm sure you're very much involved with what's going on in Saudi Arabia. Um, are you comfortable that we're seeing enough happening in the area of design? Is it moving ahead quickly or do you think it could, or do you think the pace will quicken uh, in, in, the, in the months to come? I would say if you were to chat to some of our personnel that are involved in some of the delivery and execution, they would say it's very much uh, action focused. So depending on, um, I guess, priorities and priority projects within one of these areas or different agencies. So it, it is very much an accelerated timeline. Um, you know, there is a lot of activity in that master planning stage as well. Uh, but, you know, just touching on what you mentioned earlier, Philip, you know, like these projects offer a blank canvas for like some of the most innovative minds in the world. And there is a lot of young talent within the GCC region that are now afforded the opportunity to work with uh, some of the best people in certain disciplines. So, um, yeah, every every project has its focus, has its milestone. You know, each one of those agencies have has their own unique desires. So um, when the pressure's on, uh, we understand we have to deliver, and and uh, and we're seeing that. So that's why we are extremely busy. Fantastic. And uh, which city would you choose to live in if you had to live in Saudi Arabia? Well, we're probably well. I would say my family's probably a little bit biased, so it's probably Eastern Province. You know, my wife she she grew up there, and we we probably hold uh, an affinity to uh, the Mam uh, area. But um, I guess just based on my knowledge of uh, of Saudi, um, Jeddah seems to pull. You know, because of that coastal region. But I'm I'm Riyadh based. You know, where I'm originally from, I. I enjoy the coast, I enjoy the ocean, but, uh, you know, Riyadh it is for me in the now. <laughs> I, I fortunately had the opportunity to live in Yanbu for a year, uh, which was fantastic. It was just such a beautiful, coastal, quiet, very different place in Saudi Arabia, which I'm, I'm sure is different today. That was several years ago. Well, fantastic. John, where would, where would you choose to live in Saudi Arabia? Uh, um, <laughs> either Neom or Amala. Amala. I'm, I'm with you on Amala, by the way. I, I just think that that is just such an impressive territory. Yeah, from, from, the, from the pictures, what we see, uh, Amala um, has, uh, has been very, very impressive. So uh, I would choose Amala for the, for the picturesque, uh, while Neom for its uh, smart I, I want to be I want to be that guy riding the camel through that laneway with all the rocks on the side and uh, it's just really beautiful terrain just a wonderful place well we, we we're gonna we're gonna bring this uh, webinar to a close sorry for heading over time a little bit um, we are recording and we will make the recording available to you and for everyone that's joined us today we'll make this presentation with all of the information not just the pretty pictures but all of the details we're going to provide to you and um, we want to thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us. A very special thanks to Norman and Naveen. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Um, Norman, I wish you all the very best in your new venture in Saudi Arabia. And uh, Naveen, I'm sure you'll continue to kick goals around the world in this area of sustainability and specialist engineering. Um, it's uh, it's great, uh, great to see that you guys are so busy and active and that, and that your company, let me say your award-winning company has done so, so well in the last few months and last Thank few you years. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Philip. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, John, thanks for hooking in. It's good to have you on, on, online with us. Um, we really appreciate your support with Ventures Onsite and uh, we look forward to touching base with you um, again in our next webinar, which will be later in the year, um, I, I understand the concept is that we're going to have a look at the world stage. Where are we with construction activity throughout the world? Um, that's that's not final yet, but it's just one of the ideas that we're that we're moving ahead with. And so we want to continue to bring you as much information as we can. We believe that the more information you have, the more knowledge you have about the construction industry, the more successful you will be. So please stay informed so you can stay competitive. That's our, that's our motto. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us. We do wish you all the best. Thank you guys uh, for being part of our webinar today. We look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.